morning on this beautiful day. Good morning. Good morning. We're called to worship. I'm going to sing a song that we did last February with our praise band. The Lord is present in his sanctuary. And he is here with us now. The Lord is present in his sanctuary. Let us praise the Lord. Lord is present in his people gathered here. Let us praise the Lord. Praise him, praise him. Let us praise the Lord. Praise him, praise him. Let us praise Jesus. Lord is present in his sanctuary. Let us sing to the Lord. Lord is present in his people gathered here. Let us sing to the Lord. Sing to him, sing to him. Let us sing to the Lord. Sing to him, sing to him. Let us sing to Jesus. Thank you, Linda, and good morning, and welcome to Emmanuel Episcopal Church. Please stand as you are able. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, my strength and my Redeemer. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways, to the glory of your name. Amen. May Almighty God have mercy on us. Forgive us all our sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, Strengthen us in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep us in eternal life. Amen. 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 Lord, open our lips. And our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Glory to, to the, the Father, Father, and to, to the, the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, Spirit as, as it was in the beginning, beginning is now, now and, and will be forever. forever. Amen. Amen. Alleluia. Alleluia. Sing to the Lord a new song, sing a new song, sing a new song, sing a new song to the Lord, sing a new song to the Lord, sing a new song, sing a new song, sing to the Lord a new song. Please be seated. Let us say together the jubilate. Be joyful in the Lord, all you lands. Serve the Lord with gladness and come before his presence with a song. Know this, the Lord himself is God. He himself has made us and we are his. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving. Go into his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and call upon his name. For the Lord is good, his mercy is everlasting, and his faithfulness endures from age to age.
Hear my teaching, O oh my people. Incline your ears to the words of my mouth. I will open my mouth in a parable. I will, I will declare, declare the mysteries of ancient times. That which we have heard and known, and what our forefathers have told us, we will not hide from their children. We will recount to generations to come the, the praiseworthy deeds and the power of the Lord. And the wonderful works he has done. He gave his decrees to Jacob and established a law for Israel, which he commanded them to teach their children. That the generations to come might know, and the children yet unborn, that they in their turn might tell it to their children, so that they might put their trust in God. And not forget the deeds of God, but keep his commandments. Glory, Glory to, to the Father, and to the, the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as, as it was, was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Hallelujah. Joshua was a companion of Moses, and on the death of Moses, he led the Israelites in the conquest of Canaan, and uh, thereafter divided the land between the twelve tribes. And here's a reading from the book of Joshua. Joshua gathered all the tribes of Israel to Shechem, and summoned the elders, the heads, the judges, and the officers of Israel, and they presented themselves before God. Joshua said to the people, Thus says the Lord, the God of Israel, long ago your ancestors, Terah, and his sons Abraham and Nahor, lived beyond the Euphrates and served other gods. Then I took your father Abraham from beyond the river and led him to all the land of Canaan and made his offspring many. Now therefore, revere the Lord and serve him in sincerity and in faithfulness. Put away the gods that your ancestors served beyond the river and in Egypt, and serve the Lord. Now if you are unwilling to serve the Lord, choose this day whom you will serve, whether the gods your ancestors served in the region beyond the river, or the gods of the Amorites, in whose land you are living. But as for me and my household, we will serve the Lord. Then the people answered, Far be it from us that we should forsake the Lord to serve other gods, for it is the Lord our God who brought us and our ancestors up from the land of Egypt, out of the house of slavery, and who did those great signs in our sight. He protected us along all the way that we went, and among all the peoples through whom we passed. And the Lord drove out before us all the peoples, the Amorites who lived in the land. Therefore we also will serve the Lord, for he is our God. Joshua said to the people, You cannot serve the Lord, for he is a holy God. He is a jealous God. He will not forgive your transgressions or your sins. If you forsake the Lord and serve foreign gods, then he will turn and do you harm and consume you after having done you good. And the people said to Joshua, No, we will serve the Lord. And Joshua said to the people, You are witnesses against yourselves. You have chosen the Lord to serve him. And they said, We are witnesses. He said, Then put away the foreign gods that are among you and incline your hearts to the Lord, the God of Israel. The people said to Joshua, The Lord our God, we will serve, and him we will obey. So Joshua made a covenant with the people that day and made statues and ordinances for them at Shechem. The word of the Lord. Thanks. Thank you, God. The Gospel of Matthew was written sometime between 80 and 90 AD. Um, it was written for a Jewish rather than Gentile audience. A reading from the book of Matthew. I'm sorry, the Gospel of Matthew. Jesus said, Then the kingdom of heaven will be like this. Ten bridesmaids 
took their lamps and went to meet the bridegroom. Five of them were foolish, and five were wise. When the foolish took their lamps, they took no oil with them, but the wise took flasks of oil with their lamps. As the bridegroom was delayed, all of them became drowsy and slept. But at midnight, there was a shout, Look, here is the bridegroom. Come out to meet him. Then all those bridesmaids got up and trimmed their lamps. The foolish said to the wise, Give us some of your oil, for our lamps are going out. But the wise replied, No, there will not be enough for you and for us. You had better go to the dealers and buy some for yourselves. And while they went to buy it, the bridegroom came, and those who were ready went with him into the wedding banquet, and the door was shut. Later, the other bridesmaids came also, saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. But he replied, Truly, I tell you, I do not know you. Keep awake, therefore, for you know neither the day nor the hour. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Blessed is the one who trusts in the Lord, who trusts in the Lord. Blessed is the one who trusts in the Lord, who trusts in the Lord. For he shall be like a tree planted by the water that extends its roots by the stream. For she shall be like a tree planted by the water that extends its roots by the stream. It will not fear when the heat comes, for its leaves will be green. It will not fear when the heat comes, for the leaves will be green. For he shall be like a tree planted by the water that extends its roots by the stream. For she shall be like a tree planted by the water that extends its roots by the stream. Thank you, Linda. As you remain seated, let us say together in unison the first song of Isaiah. Surely it is God who saves me. I will trust in him and not be afraid. For the Lord is my stronghold and my sure defense, and he will be my savior. Therefore you shall draw water with rejoicing from the springs of salvation. And on that day you shall say, Give thanks to the Lord and call upon his name. Make his deeds known among the peoples. See that they remember that his name is exalted. Sing the praises of the Lord, for he has done great things, and this is known in all the world. Cry aloud, inhabitants of Zion. Ring out your joy, for the Great One in the midst of you is the Holy One of Israel. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Amen. In the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. So if the leader is calling upon all the people to gather for a meeting, it must be important. We can imagine what it would have been like in Joshua's time. There would have been a time when ordinary work and chores were suspended a feeling of excitement. Children would be hushed and people on the periphery would want to come in closer 
in the absence of any PA system so they could hear what was being discussed. There would, of course, have been excitement. This was an unusual gathering. There would also have been rumors, gossip. A few people would claim to know in advance exactly what was going to happen. Some would repeat all of the gossip that they had heard in innuendo as well. Some would groan with cynicism. Another inconsequential meeting. It's the same whenever people gather to consider their future. It has always been the same and probably always will be just like that. So I'm not describing our annual meeting that we will <laughs> conduct by Zoom in just a little while, although indeed I hope there's great excitement. And I'm not drawing a simple parallel with our national elections that have but just occurred, though surely those elections are not far from your mind or my own. And we should pause and reflect as Christians and as Americans on the state of our nation and our commonwealth. I continue to search for parallels between scripture and what we experience today in our church, in our community, in our nation. I look for parallels in ways with the hope, the conviction that we can transcend partisanship at all levels of our common life. I'm convinced that as Christians, that must be our contribution. So let's look a bit more closely at Joshua and see how much of a fit to our circumstances we might find. Now first, a bit of fair warning, maybe even a half-hearted apology I've never preached on Joshua. I never thought to preach on Joshua, but reading this lesson, something stirred within me. The urgency of preaching on this passage became obvious. Joshua assembled the people of Israel near the end of his life to remind them of their challenges and their opportunities. One need not be nearing the end of one's life in order to consider the situation. And I pray that my own time is not near. But I see aspects of what Joshua said that I believe may apply to us. We must heed Joshua's words. A good leader and a good speaker such as Joshua began by putting the present in historical perspective. Look where you have been. Look at what you have experienced. It began hundreds of years before with Abraham. As our country began with those we call the founders, as Emmanuel Church has been blessed, by generations of notable people, prominent families, distinguished leaders. There is much for which to be grateful. In fact, the flame of gratitude must never be extinguished. If we lose gratitude, our purpose becomes distorted. There is no better foundation for our life as Christians. With gratitude, Ideals such as community and service begin to come alive. Then Joshua focuses on an issue that had plagued the Hebrew people for some time. It sounds like an ancient issue, but it has its own contemporary versions. Joshua warns his people of their temptation to serve other gods. It happened in Egypt. It happened as they wandered in the wilderness when they built a golden calf. It happened again as they settled in the promised land. In fact, 
Simply settling in the promised land was not the end of the story. It was the beginning of a new chapter. As they settled, they had to shift from being a wandering people to being a farming people. As they became a farming people, they were tempted to imitate their new neighbors, the people who already occupied the land, who worshipped fertility gods. It made perfect sense. You don't know how to grow crops. This character is growing wonderful crops. Let's do what he's doing, including bowing to those idols to which he bows. But when they began to do that, they began to forget who they were. They began to lose their identity. They began to lose their purpose and their way. It happens very easily. We don't even notice it happening. Various claims go around. Worship this idol, your crops will overflow. If there had been social media then, it would have come alive. Somebody heard that somebody said that somebody else had gotten this or that or the other. And of course, there is a dark side. Blame begins for anything that didn't work out. Well, I did what he said, but I couldn't grow a thing. And then difference becomes division. And by the way, Israel already had 12 tribes. On a good day, on a beautiful day, they would scrap with one another. Somebody always felt disrespected or cheated. Complaint becomes resentment. False gods made more false promises and suspicion spread. People adopted the idea that life ought to be whatever they wanted it to be. Forget all the others, I'm going to get mine. But that's not freedom. That's bondage. Bondage to a false God. A false individualism. We cannot simply have it as we choose. Some days are sunny, some days are rainy. To deal with it all, we must work together. There's a modern American version, I believe, of worshiping false gods. There's a misguided obsession with vanquishing those who think or act differently. It is a dead end. It breeds readiness to speak ill of others, to think the worst, to plot vindication. So when the Hebrew people succumbed to that, they began to sink. They split apart and eventually were conquered. And Joshua, near the end of his life, could see where things were headed. And so we Americans face, I believe, a similar threat. If we play the game of win or lose, the false god of defeating those who differ, we begin to spiral downward. But the God of Israel, the God whose Son, Jesus Christ, is our Savior, points us in a very different direction. And that direction is on our currency, the simple Latin phrase, e pluribus unum, out of many, one. Originally, from the ancient philosopher Cicero. And I know that because the other day, I caught the interview of our presiding bishop, Michael Curry, on the Today Show, and he cited the phrase, e pluribus unum. Now, I am privileged to call myself one of Bishop Curry's friends and of some long standing. And I can tell you that Michael Curry is faithful, authentic, consistent, and frankly, wonderful to be around. The interviewer asked Bishop Curry why in the background in his office he had a helmet for the Buffalo Bills football team. And Bishop Curry smiled and says, if you follow the Bills, you must believe in hope. <laughs> the moment should not be lost on us. Hope, laughter, togetherness, possibility. It's no wonder Michael Curry's on national TV these days. The faith he embodies is what we need desperately. There are no simple, immediate cures for what ails us, but dialogue. 
which means speaking as well as listening, stepping back from suspicion and resentment, willing to hear again, talking through our concerns, finding common ground, resolving to pull together. These are the hallmarks of people following God and none other on our journey. These are America's ideals as well. E pluribus unum, out of many, one. Happily, we here at Emmanuel readily smile and welcome one another. Our instinct is to leave difference in the parking lot because we gather to worship God and to seek God's guidance together. Our sense of community is rooted in the Bible and in common prayer and service. To be sure, we have our challenges. The coronavirus pandemic has hampered our ability to gather. We continue to need to be cautious and to adapt to necessary constraints. But we have gained facility, perhaps even a level of comfort with this approach. By Zoom, we will shortly have our annual meeting. We also gather by teleconference for Bible study and we worship here. At least, I trust, on a temporary basis before returning indoors. It must also be noted that Emmanuel's discernment process has been extended due to the pandemic. Just as church life generally has been changed for the time being, we are like the Hebrew people living in a new place with unexpected demands before us. But so long as we keep our focus on God, on being God's people here, we will prosper now as we have in the past. I am honored to be with you for as long as it takes in an uncertain time. So we gather as Joshua gathered his people. And we also must remember as Joshua called them to remember and not lose our focus or our hope. We are God's people on life's journey together, blessed to be together. Our mission is to set an example for those around us who are tempted by false gods. However stressful the world becomes, we must put the love of God and respect for the dignity of all people above all else. We must not be tempted by anything less. Our future is not in doubt at Emmanuel or across our nation, a nation blessed by God. May we never lose our focus. Now please stand and let us affirm our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, 
as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Show us your mercy, O Lord. And grant us your salvation. Clothe your ministers with righteousness. Let your people sing with joy. Give peace, O Lord, in all the world. For only in you can we live in safety. Lord, keep this nation under your care. And, and guide us in the way of justice and truth. Let your way be known upon earth. Your saving health among all nations. Let not the needy, O Lord, be forgotten. Nor the hope of the poor be taken away. Create in us clean hearts, O God. And sustain us with your Holy Spirit. O God, whose blessed Son came into the world, that he might destroy the works of the devil and make us children of God and heirs of eternal life. Grant that, having this hope, we may purify ourselves as he is pure, that when he comes again with power and great glory, we may be made like him, in his eternal and glorious kingdom, where he lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. I want to add this morning from the Book of Common Prayer, a collect for our national life. Lord God Almighty, you have made all the peoples of the earth for your glory, to serve you in freedom and in peace. Give to the people of our country a zeal for justice and the strength of forbearance, that we may use our liberty in accordance with your gracious will. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Heavenly Father, in you we live and move and have our being. We humbly pray you so to guide and govern us by your Holy Spirit, that in all the cares and occupations of our life, we may forget you, but may remember that we are walking in your sight. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let us say together the general giving. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, your unworthy servants, give you humble thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness to us and to all whom you have made. We bless you for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life. But above all, for your immeasurable love, and the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we pray, give us such an awareness of your mercies that with truly thankful hearts we may show forth your praise, not only with our lips, but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to your service and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory throughout all ages. Amen. Almighty God, you have given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplication to you. And you have promised through your well-beloved that when two or three are gathered together in his name, you will be in the midst of them. Fulfill now, O Lord, our desires and petitions, as may be best for us. Us in this world, knowledge of your
May the God of hope fill us with all joy and peace in believing through the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Thank you very much. I do hope you're excited about our annual Zoom meeting. Uh, preached a little shorter this time and wanted to uh, give you plenty of time to get home. Tracy is pointing to announcements. There are two uh, I will make, and please feel free to be seated. Please be seated for just a couple of announcements. So our annual meeting, uh, and I hope you will take a look at that, but I, above all, I hope you will sign in at about 11.30. So a couple of more announcements. Uh, we're going to have a fall cleanup day next Saturday with uh, 